April 11th, 2016, on Dana Dernford, your host, nuclearproctologist.org. And you can find these videos and Fukushima presentations throughout the entire internet. And it always sounds a little lot louder and annoying on the headphones because that's different. It's plugged right into it, so I can't tell if they smurfed up. And I probably did smurf up, but it's such a short one, we'll let it play itself out. Good morning, everybody. And we are trying to stream in 1080. And 1080, of course, is not the simplest uh, way to stream. I'll fade that down. I'll fade that out. And so we've been trying for months to stream in 1080. And if I can do that, like I'm doing right now, I can also record directly into the 1080. And then when I post that beautiful girl by Dana on YouTube, it's a very high quality, very, very good audio. And everything is legible. That was the point of what doing what we're doing, right? So if I show you something and it's in high quality, say, then it should come out extraordinarily clean uh, on the recording, but it should stream live, but you're stuck with bandwidth. So we're kind of hoping to solve all that. It always takes a couple of minutes to get the stream up and running for anybody that's not familiar. And there's some issues there with this. Let's get out of that mode. And come back over and say good morning to everybody. And start stream off. <coughs> good morning, everyone. And some reason your stream is really small looking this morning. Dana, make it big enough so we can see each other for goodness sakes. And on my end anyway, everything looks really good. The letters are all clear. Hopefully that came out. Good morning, everybody. I'm Thirst. K. White Sparrow. Amy. Nova. Nev Killer. Kevin O'Kane. Good morning, everybody. And we know Elaine is out there, and Jan Brooks is out there, and thank you for that last video, Jan. It's an invaluable collection for me. And so today we're going to stream in 1080, so I set up, I set up a, let's cover a couple of headlines here, we're over here on the, on the laptop, I'll bring up the other camera. Good morning, everybody. And you do that right away, Dina. I don't know, man. Titan global nuclear security measures take effect in May. So they just had the big annual, we got to stop terrorists from getting their hands on dirty bombs. Now McAllister and McAllister, Oklahoma, and USA, all they make is dirty bombs out of the nuclear waste. And in Iraq, they fired 5.5 million rounds a month every month. Uh, majority of that was dirty bombs, apparently. They got 1.1 billion tons to get rid of a dirty that they can use for dirty bombs. 150 countries will be legally bound to strengthen their protection of bananas, potato chips, Wagner sunshine, flying on airplanes because of the radiation. Yeah, but that's all just normal background radiation. It's irrelevant. It doesn't come out of a chain reaction. So these people are idiots. Exclusive the UN starts towards new control over world oceans. That was just a joke, by the way. Like, if you got a pound of it and 1,500 people in the theater, you kill everybody in the theater in 20 minutes. You can do that every 20 minutes with that one pound. Each reactor had 5 million pounds in it. And every 18 months, you put that up on the roof and put another 5 million pounds in it and left it up on the roof for 10 years. Those reactors are running 25 years. So we're talking 300 million pounds missing. The UN started towards new control over the world's oceans. Dad, dad. That, that, that one there, that one, that's bad. Who are these people? Uh, well, all the continents are captured by the UN. We might as well grab the ocean while we're at it. UN shouldn't exist. This is a, a global government. That's what UN is. It's a global government of of powerhouses, of corporations. Everybody's appointed. Same as uh, the Atomic Energy Oversight Worldwide. That they're all appointed. They're all appointed by countries that are pro-nuclear. <laughs> it's, 
just a big first. Okay. Hang on. I finally got videos done, fixed. And so let's see what. This is MIT coming up. I'm going to bring you over to the other camera. MIT coming up. I'm going to put the headphones on. I'm going to have to adjust the audio on the fly on some of this stuff. Because everything has got its own audio. Okay, here we go. Doc. This is MIT on March the 15th, 2011. And they're talking about Fukushima, and so I just snipped it out. It's March the 15th, MIT. You can find it yourself, the whole lecture about Fukushima after the accident. Here's what they said four days later. I'd like to welcome our own students from nuclear science and engineering and other members of the community here at MIT and also visitors, I think, from elsewhere. And shortly th after 3.30, there was a hydrogen explosion in building up in the building of reactor one so when of that explosion um, not long after the evacuation zone was extended to 20 kilometers radius on monday at 11 a.m so this is now uh in, on the third day um there was a, a hydrogen explosion of building of reactor three in the meantime reactor two fuel rods what what is reported to have been fully uncovered. And they quite soon began to inject seawater, borated seawater. Water. Um, okay. He said they began to inject borated seawater. Bear with me. I want to show you a picture. Borated seawater. How do you get in there? And like when this is going on, do you think like this was over in five minutes or something? But anyway, he's only repeating what he's told. Let's keep going. I'd like to welcome our own students. Reactor Whoa. three. In the meantime, reactor two fuel rods. What what is reported to have been fully uncovered, and they quite soon began to inject seawater borated seawater water um, at 6 14 a.m on tuesday that's today of course but but since they're um uh, 13 hours ahead of us that, that was quite a while ago now um there was a third explosion this was in reactor two this was inside as far as we can tell inside or near uh the containment and um another worry that arose was on that same day was that the reactor four building Reactor 4 is adjacent to Reactor 3, uh, was observed to be aflame, a, a and... Um, Does that look like it's a flame? It's, I put that in the background, those pictures, right? Let's keep. So, this was sort of at the same time that radiation levels were increasing further. There was... Yeah, <laughs> why was the radiation increasing? I don't see no problem with that building, do you? A lot of suspicion that this fire was in the spent fuel pool. That's allegedly the spent fuel pools. These are pictures they showed us. But the picture is just looking at. Um, however, since that time, TEPCO has said that there was an oil leak in a water pump and that that was <laughs> what was, was the cause of the fire. Does that look like a leak in the water pump? <laughs> oh, do you get where I'm coming from? <laughs> I gotta play that one more time. Instant replay. Yeah. Fire was in the spent fuel pool. Um, however, since that time, TEPCO has said that there was an oil leak in a water pump, and that that was what. Was, um, however, since that time, TEPCO has said that there was an oil leak <laughs> in the water pump, and that that was one more what time. Was the, um, however, since that time, TEPCO has said that there was an oil leak in a water pump, and that that was what was, was the cause of the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's hilarious. Um, okay, leaking the water. <laughs> like, when you bring that up and look at it, it blew up. Does, is that a leak in the water pump to you? 
We're going to fill in up in the top left-hand corner. <laughs> but anyway, let's get on. Um, I got a really, I actually got a fun one for you. I'm going to turn the volume down because this is self-explanatory. When I put this clip together a few years ago, this was the NRC um, on March the 15th, the same day as MIT, which they just come out and told you, complete meltdowns, melt-throughs, melt-outs, nations, lost their inventory in desperate mode. And, but Tepco says it's an oil leak. But the pictures I showed you is the documentation, yeah? So here's C-SPAN. And uh, that's a minute and 32 seconds. So I'm just going to turn on my volume and <laughs> just put that out there. We're here to get a briefing on the ongoing crisis associated with the nuclear power plants in Japan. I'm very privileged that we have the executive director for operations at the NRC here, Bill Borchardt. I couldn't speculate on that. An expert, a true expert as well. Uh, again, I wouldn't okay. wish to speculate. So we feel very blessed that you, you could come and, st and stand in until the chairman comes, and we really do welcome you. Again, I can't okay. uh, speculate. Well, teaching uh, all of us the lessons that we have to take away from, from what is happening. I couldn't speculate on that. What we believe is a significant amount of fuel damage uh, in the uh, three re operating reactors, units one, two, and three, which were operating at the time of the earthquake, and then because of the uh, spent fuel problems that are in Unit 4 right. of that reactor facility. All of those factors taken into combination, uh, if that same type of source term, that same type of radiological problem existed in the United States, our recommendation to state governments would be to evacuate okay. out to 50 miles. Well, that's a really good point because I'm asking you, do you know how many people live within 50 miles of San Onofre nuclear power plant? I, I do not know. Well, I'm going to tell you how many people. 7.4 million people. So 7.4 million people. Sorry about that. 7.4 million people within 50 miles. Now I'm having a cigarette, it uh, doesn't have 7,000 chemicals and that your media told you nicotine is terrible. Nicotine has never been proven in any studies to give cancer, but the 7,000 chemicals that they put in, yeah, 7,000. Who woke up one morning and said, hey, I got it, not here, here. <laughs> 7,000 chemicals in a cigarette make it trendy. Don't tell the slaves, though. Okay, so that was MIT. Then you had C-SPAN. And now we got Strat Stanford. This was April 11th, one month, one month later, talking about the uh, same thing, the event in Japan. Here we go. And this is just a short one. It's 24 seconds. Watch your audio. I'll adjust it on the fly as quick as I can. But. Stanford University. We are very, very lucky today to have two real experts on this topic. Uh, the first is Matthew Wald from the New York Times. Although it's a mess to try to cope with a meltdown, or three meltdowns, three meltdowns in a spent fuel pool, right after a tsunami. Yeah, I would say so. So a month later, three meltdowns and span fuel pool and tsunami. Now, we got one more here somewhere. See span. That's, uh, what did he say here? What we believe is a significant amount of fuel damage uh, in the uh, three re operating reactors, units one, two, and three, which were operating at the time of the earthquake, and then th because of the uh, spent fuel problems that are in unit four right. of that. Now, do you want to hear that one more time? What we believe is a significant amount of fuel damage 
uh, in the uh, three re operating reactors, units one, two, and three, which were operating at the time of the earthquake, and then th because of the uh, spent fuel problems that are in unit four right. of that. Okay, hang on. I got a better idea. Because of the problem, I shot that one. Let's go play that one more time. What we believe is a significant amount of fuel damage uh, in the uh, three re operating reactors, units one, two, and three, which were operating at the time of the earthquake, and then th because of the uh, spent fuel problems that are in unit four right. of that. Of that, of that, of that. Okay. Now, reactor four. Here's Seth Dorn. And he claims he's inside of reactor four. Okay. I smurfed this up already. I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes. Let's just hit the play button. Of the decommissioning work. Hang on. I gotta set his audio. He's too loud. Let's do that again. Of the decommissioning work taking place here in reactor four. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. So in four hours, he received less than a chest x-ray. But let's take another look at this picture of him in claiming that he's in the reactor. Oh, that was crazy. So he's walking, look at his shadow. I'll turn that audio right down for one second. Let's play that in slow motion. Look at this. Look at the walls, look at a few people, look at all the people standing around with their hands in their pocket playing with themselves. Look at that, everyone all playing with themselves. See that? Look, you can see their hands. Dana. Stop with your... F okay. All right. Now, he's inside a Unit 4. Yeah. He's inside of that building. He claims it's like that. Right? That's not me. That's him. That's Seth Dorn. That's CBS and PBS promoting him, allegedly, inside a Unit 4. Yeah, he says, here I am, inside of... ...of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. And see, he had his hand held open when he was doing that. Taking place here in Reactor 4. No. And then he says he got less than a chest x-ray. Or flying on an airplane, was it? Let's play the rest of it. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. At the end of our tour, at the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure on a nuclear accident from a radiation release. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. But a pound of it will kill you in a big building in less than 20 minutes. 1,500 people. Yeah, he's in walking around. Now, when you go look at the pictures, why did they lie about that? Why did they show you that and claim it was that? Is that a, is that a bad question? Am I a bad person for pointing that out? Does that make me like Dina? Well, are you saying that doesn't exist? Of course it exists. It's inside of that, isn't it? Well, he tore it all down. He brought in the world's biggest cement truck. There she is in action. You can see it on the left-hand side of that picture. The spray water into that. Where Seth is to, right? Seth is inside of that building, see? But he says it looks like that. 
Okay, let's keep going. Fukushima, 9.0 earthquake, 9,000 miles an hour, traveled through the country, felt in Florida 30 minutes, 35 minutes later, 7,000 times worse than Christchurch, one to three G force, uh, one G you can't stand up. Tsunami tore the country apart, tore that country apart, tore it apart. But we're led to believe that like that building there, the reactors survived, right? So we're, we're led to believe that that's not real, but this is. That that's not real. You shouldn't consider that. You should only consider that. And so the distraction, like why, like Seth Dorn told you it was okay. So why would you believe me? Why would you believe the official picture? Seth Dorn told you it was okay, right? No problem with the fuel pool. But you just heard the NRC and everybody else. And then you heard them apologetically claim it's like an x-ray. But we're talking about stuff that will melt your organs. That's why uh, there's a big whoop, you know, about terrorists, the headlines I was showing you earlier. Now, when WHIP had a, a release, they rolled out Dr. John Neal from the Oklahoma, and by the way, um, that's where they're making all the depleted uranium rounds, for munitions for the A-10 Warthog, that's all it shoots is depleted uranium munitions, one and a half tons a minute, uh, that's 44,000 Nagasaki bombs, animosity equivalent of radiation being released into the environment every minute by the A-10. This is, this, this, I mean, Fallujah, 80% of the children are, were born with uh, lumps of flesh, no arms, no legs, no face, no eyes, totally deformed. Just incredible deformities from depleted uranium. But anyway, the apologists... Everything, it all depends upon the amount. Dr. John Nail, a professor of chemistry at Oklahoma City University, is not very concerned either. And even healthy foods aren't 100% healthy. Most. So right now he's setting it up saying healthy foods are not 100% healthy. What the hell is he talking about? He, what he's doing is allowing this doctor to claim People will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico Republic. So he's, he set him up, he set him up so that, because he's a sitting professor, why would you not believe that? Well, potassium in a banana is homeostasis. Your body can't get any more potassium than it already has, neither can your clothing or anything else. So why did he do that? Same reason Seth pretended he was inside of a building that didn't exist and claimed it was like a dental x-ray or, or similar like John Neal. Now there's another guy, Dr. Raven Gilmetty. I'm not gonna go through the documentation, but I'll just, he got 94 studies killing beagle dogs and beagle puppies. I covered almost every single stream, but I haven't got it imported into the new 1080 that we're doing today. It'll be there tomorrow, trust me. But I do got a little video clip of him I'm gonna play. So after Fukushima, he claimed the jet streams weren't real. And now remember, iodine-131, this was a story about potassium being disappearing throughout the country right after Fukushima, and they rolled out Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. They killed beagle dogs and beagle pups for 35 years with americium, neptunium, and plutonium. And they never try to cure the dogs, and the, the studies are horrible. We've covered them all on this site, but we'll do it again tomorrow, next day, and day after. Here's a little video clip saying the jet streams don't exist. Of uh, how people think that they're protecting themselves by going off and getting KI, but in KI being potassium iodide. Um, unfortunately, it's probably not going to do them any good. Why not? Because here in New Mexico, uh, we're not going to get exposed to any radio iodine. Dr. Gil May has researched radioactive respiratory health for four decades in New Mexico. He says this run on iodine is just unnecessary. We need to be able to put risks in perspective, and radiation is just one of the many risks that we suffer um, by living on planet Earth. Jeff Todd, KRQE News. By living on planet Earth? No, 
nuclear, everything that goes into a nuclear reaction, I'm sorry, only uranium plutonium going in there and 12,000 isotopes come out. We only have 162 in nature throughout the solar system that we're aware of, that we can identify with the technology that we have at the end of the evolution of the human species. We're at the end of the evolution now. We have an extinction event. The Pacific Ocean is by, there's 1% to 1% of life left. We've done 260 days on the coastline. I'm not going to cover that today because we don't have it in Porter. We set up, um, we've been trying to work this new software for over three months. And it's just, never thought we'd be doing a 1080 live stream anyway. So, it'll be there forever after starting the moral. And so Dr. Raymond Gilmetti studied uh, respiratory illness. This is, shows the picture of the facility, right? You remember that? Um, I'll bring it up for you if you want. Right, Loveless. Nice name for a mass murder machine, isn't it? They interviewed him right outside of Loveless. Now, they didn't do it inside because you'll hear all the dogs screaming with the tumors and the cancers and uh, 1,800 diseases that show up before the cancers. 1,800, and I just dug up that information last night. And I don't know if I imported it today. Let's run into a bunch of headlines for the rest of the show. And this is gonna be hardcore, kinda. Senior advisor who resigns says Japan government sent public safety, safe radiation limits uh, too high. Now, 20 times too high because radiation has been muddled with man-made and nature have been muddled together. This is why they've done that. they got people to come out and claim it's like a banana, like I showed you earlier, like natural and like Seth Dorn fake and being in a building in Fukushima nuclear power plant and telling you it's like an x-ray. When the atom gets in your body, it attacks your body forever. We're not going to go through the explanations of each of these headlines. We're just going to start running through. Comparisons with x-rays and CAT scans. Take the words out of my mouth. Make me a lawyer right away. Comparisons with x-rays and CAT scans meaningless. Inhaling particles increase radiation exposure by a factor of a trillion. And I hope these pictures are coming out better on your guys' end. I'm just going to refresh. No, oh, we're doing okay. Here we go. Fukushima nuclear plume, nuclear plume, covered most of North America, now over North Atlantic, including the Caribbean, Canada's East Coast. These are all aggregated at an energy site. And so you can just link, see the blue link? That's directly over to the story. And there's many more links below that to different, they only put a paragraph of each uh, media that covered it. They're not writing the articles, they're just aggregating it. Radioactive releases may continue for a year or more even after fission has stopped. Top official said this was on the 12th of March, the day after, likely on the way at a second. Like I showed you the clips of MIT earlier, right? We showed you the clips of MIT, Stanford, the NRC, and everybody else. Um, wow, here we go. And we haven't got a lot to cover today because we didn't think it was going to work 1080. Officials presuming that two nuclear reactors have now meltdowns, had meltdowns. That's the 13th of March, 2011, CNN, scumbags anyway. And Washington Post, nuclear official confirms explosion at Fukushima number three. And I'll show you number three. They confirmed an explosion, yeah? Wow. You know what a picture does for me? It makes you guys look like idiots. This was a detonation. This was mixed oxide fuel. This is, um, I'm not going to go into it right now, but it's a few million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. That was the media originally, but when you look at... Um, the literature you find out it's much worse than that. It's like two million reactors went off on this planet and then it consumes everything, the rocks, the steel, the rebar, the cement, atomizes, ionizing and radiating and aerosoling that back into the environment 
as contaminated product, like a dirty bomb would do. Japan's crew facing 100-year battle. Don't drink the Wayne, rain. I was going to say with a W, Wayne, Wayne water. That's like a tongue twister on its own. Rainwater is the state of Virginia. It's because I'm doing so much the one time here. Uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction may be coming from melted fuel in number one. Don't mention number three or number four, for goodness sakes. You know what I mean? But the number one, this is number two, number three, had meltdowns confirmed. Number four said Dorn said it's fine, but we know that's all gone. It's gone. Look at it yourself. Are you naive? Are you gullible? We know the heat signature. And remember March the 18th. See, if you don't get power in 11 hours, it's bye bye water in the fuel pool. It boils off an a inch a minute. It boils off regularly 120,000 liters a day. Fuel pools are full of reactor cores. When they boil off, zirconium cladding is exposed. Now, before it went through a chain reaction, it doesn't matter. Once it went through a chain reaction, now the zirconium cladding and everything else is incredibly volatile. When that's exposed at that stage, it'll melt down right away. It'll heat up immediately and start melting down. Even if there's a few inches exposed, game over. But I mean, they're a long way off from power being restored because the country looked like that, right? And because how are you going to restore that? How are you going to restore power to something that don't exist? I'm going to pretend it exists, I guess. How are you going to restore that? The whole country was whacked. That's whacked. But we're led to believe all the nuclear power plants survived throughout the coastline. That's what we're led to believe, right? No end in sight for radioactive releases at Fukushima. So many conflicting. No, because it blew all. Melted down. Look at this one, number four. Look at that. Look at us. Oh, Dana, I think I can see a pull on the roof there. Will you look at the left? Look at the bottom. Look to the right. Consider... For Christ's sakes, in every sense of that word, the buildings blew up. They, and like sit Dorns in there walking around telling you it looks like that. I don't know. But when you look at this, that should be the definitive moment in your search. That should be game over. You need to take a screen capture of that. This is why I struggle so hard to get to the day to have that 1080. Now I can finally focus on shows and everything else. Because I'm struggling. I've been arrested and vilified and demonized in the media and harassed and defunded and bankrupt and dragged into court five times. I've done 260 days on the coastline, five months without coming home, 15,000 miles, over 200,000 pictures, underwater footage from one end of the coast to the other end of the coast. I'm not some armchair activist not that that's bad i'm some i'm somebody went out there and is bringing you documentation and then taking it to an entirely different level here every day five days a week in utter desperation so you can understand so you can come to terms with this so you can be consoled that there is people out there that are not all bad that are not bad like the majority of scientists and academics that told us nothing to worry about look at the energy that this tsunami can enforce not enough power this was march the 21st that meant everything was gone but it was gone anyway that was the distraction see they didn't know any better i guess at the time and then people coming out and saying it looks perfect like Seth Dorn. This is, is an event. This is many Chernobyls, thousands of Chernobyls, totally different fuel, bit, three times bigger. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. This is mixed oxide. 
This is Max Fuel. Will you people on the planet and the academics and the media please wake up? Chernobyl was nothing compared to this. Keep going. Yeah, there's still not enough power to run crucial machinery. They never went and looked for the bodies, the police and everybody, for three months because there was so much radiation. There was 300 police officers who died of radiation sickness, but officially they won't count that, but that is counted. Uh, getting power supplied to the crippled Fukushima atomic plant, we must avoid being overly, overtly optimistic. How are you going to get power in there? Huh? Get any idea how long it took to plow out that road just to get in there? You got any idea? Remember the lady was in that telephone boot right alongside of him? She had a boot up against the car now. We're fighting for him. He can't fight. See? She can't fight. That's in that phone boot. For the carnage left behind and for the misery and the cover up. There's people in those homes. They couldn't get out of the way, you know. The red squares are a hundred to a thousand. And the big red squares rather are a thousand plus. The yellow uh, is missing. And this is 400 miles of the coastline. Nuclear power plants are right along that same stretch. You got 30 million bags out of that country. But you got to realize there's 15 reactors. 15 reactors. 15. There's 14 were affected here. Here's a governor saying they got to decommission, dismantle. 10, 14 total, 15 of Japan's Kermit reactors are shut down due to damage, April the 18th. Cooling system at Okanagawa nuclear plant was flooded. Was flooded. The whole country was flooded. The whole country was ripped to pieces, not just a nuclear power plant shut. And that these buildings, inside of that building, inside of that, I can assure you, Seth Dorn is not inside of that building. You think Seth Dorn, look at that. And this is where Seth Dorn says he's to, right around the same time. How am I the bad person? How is he the good person? How is he allowed to continue to be promoted by the media? How is he allowed a free walk on all of that? How is CBS and PBS? He got CBS right on his shirt there. Look at it. Right on his fake suit in the fake building. Why is why why are you not tweeting and Facebook and the shit out of him? Send him send him when this goes up on YouTube, copy and paste at thirty eight minutes on YouTube and forty seconds. Copy and paste that on his Twitter. Copy and paste it on his Facebook. I'm recording this separate here. And at 38 minutes, I start talking about him in that context. But you, you, you grab it right from the YouTube, the link, at that point, and put it on his Facebook for the next month and a half to five years to ten years till the end of time, till he's fired and disgraced and humiliated and ridiculed. He says he's in there. He says he's in there. See, if you done it, we'd win. With me doing it, they just blocked me. They ignore me. But if everybody went and done it, they can't block all of you. So that's the that's the power you got. I can give you the data coming out of your eardrums. See, Luke from spent fuel pull at two reactors after seven point four quake. Now they're blaming it on an aftershock. Right? When you know that people died throughout the country 
They got 30 million confirmed bags washed away through the same place, but were led to believe that all the reactors survived. No, Dana. No, Dana. You're full of bullshit. There's not 15 reactors. They all survived. Everything else got swept away, but not the reactors. Okay. They sprayed salt water on the reactors. And the salt water created those little sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs you're looking at. That's what the basic shape, they take other shapes like I was just showing you. These were shapes here coming up are from an academic study. It's not the best depiction, but it's close enough. And so there's different shapes. And that can ingest 88 curries at, at one for each ball. So 88 times uh, 37 billion atomic atoms could fit in each one of these sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. So inside of that buckyball now, that buckyball becomes a, because it's from sulfur spraying salt water on the reactor, becomes a super nuclear engine. And when they finally got back in there, long after everything was evaporated in aerosol and the chain reaction was consuming everything, when they got in there, we're going to come back over to his headlines, keep banging away at them. These are the headlines coming up. So they sprayed salt water for 40 or 50 days because the country was wrecked like I just showed you over and over and over and over and over. I'm not going back to that. I'll come back in a minute and show you more if you want, but... Uh, yeah, right. Uncontrolled nuke. That's where we left off, right? Okay. Uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction may become from melted fuel number one reactor. Uh, radioactive iodine 131 Pennsylvania rainwater samples over 3,000 federal drinking water standard. Uh, just 10 times more 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more iodine 129 with a 15 million year, 15 million, 150 million altogether. It decays in other isotopes. But it's, that does it, if you look at the literature, it does it for infinity, but we disregard it at that when it hits lead in 150 million years. So it's, that's a dirty bomb floating around for 150 million years. Over Canada and America, there was 220 million iodine-129, which ionized and radiates your thyroid glands nine times more effectively than iodine-131. There's 220 million becquels atomic atoms per liter of rainwater over Canada after Fukushima. That's, that's official now, see? Independent French Radiation Commission warns Europe the risk from Fukushima fallout is no longer ineligible. It says, because they keep talking about bananas, potato chips, and walking in the sunshine, dental x-rays. says U.S. West Coast had eight to ten times more because the jet streams are actually real. I know. Cesium and iodine are 600% above EPA's maximum containment. So that's an event. That's a dirty bomb went off in their country or Fukushima. You make up your own mind. But that's an event. It only got to come to your country once. What about circling your planet for infinity? Being re-liberated through convection evaporation through a radiated dead Pacific Ocean that doesn't sustain life. That the four million other species didn't receive the coastline of Canada. Japan official says delay in raising Fukushima to 11, level 7 was because we could trigger a panicked reaction. A panicked reaction, yeah? That's what you were hired to do, was trigger that panic reaction. That's why you were given the authority. That's why you were given equipment. That's why you were given a monetary, the education. That's why we were given a job, was to warn the population. And panic they should. So there was an event that people should have panicked over, and the ones in their right mind did, and then there were the ones who listened to the media and didn't know the panic, didn't know the shelter in the place, didn't know to head north, east, south, or west, or get out of the country, didn't have an option, sent their children to school during the plume. 
Health Canada done the coastline of Canada also. Americans EPA done the same thing where they had the numbers, they didn't warn the population because nuclear was terrified that that would be the nail in their coffin and the easy ride would be over and the genocide and ecocide would slow down. Because that's what nuclear is, it's a genocide and an ecocide without the accidents. Without the accidents. It's still a genocide and ecocide because you have to vent everything and so you're always releasing it. And then you demonize some people because they're, ah, terrorists are going to get it. But then you put it in bullets from McAllister in McAllister, Oklahoma, bomb manufacturing, and all he produces dirty bombs, and you shoot that in other people's countries. Iraq and Afghanistan, for nine years, 5.5 million rounds a month to get uh, 10,000 Taliban. They're just people. If you shoot them, they die. But apparently not. 5.5 million rounds a month at 10,000 people, and then Afghanistan, Iraq, then Libya, then now Syria, 7 million refugees. In Yemen and Africa and other countries, 22,000 drone strikes uh, in India. They get the same 10,000 people. All of that. 290,000 rapes over 10 years in the military. They get the same 10,000. If you're raping your own, that much, how many you're raping in the countries you're occupying? And then you got uh, 22 veterans committing suicide every day. That's 80,000 over the same decade. They get 10,000 bad guys that bleed and die if they get shot, just like me or you, that are illiterates on top of that. Let's keep going with the headlines. There's no narrative for war that works. Eh? But we couldn't trigger the panic. Wait till you find out what you've done. Wait till you find out what you've done, buddy. Tefco needs to check if high radiation doses are spreading elsewhere. And two more spots appear to be above uh, 10 sievers per hour, but no plans to actually take. Now, five sievers will kill you. Five sievers will melt your organs. Uh, you will die. It'll take about two weeks. But if you stay there for 20 minutes to 40 minutes, you'll die on the spot. And 10 sievers will kill you as you walk past it. And so that's why all the homeless and destitute and immigrants are being sent in there. That's why you won't see Harvard or Yale or Berkeley or Stanford or MIT or Oxford or any of the shakers and movers on the planet in there. Because there's, you only need one spot like that. And that's just walk past that, go home, have the flu for a week, and then shit out your... If you're a woman, your uterus, like they've done at Hiroshima or Hiroshima. Nothing good about nuclear, folks. Fatal radiation level found at Fukushima exceeds 10 sievers. That's fatal, yeah? That drop you as you're, as you're walking down the road a few minutes later. What we face is a great unknown of all mankind because that's indicative. Now, I mean... When you look at that, that's what you expect, see? Do, do you get it? When you when you look at that, that's the only thing you would imagine. Because what did that do? Well, for starters, it's aerosoling and atomizing, but it detonated, yeah? And then it was washed throughout the country. And then, let me explain one more thing. See, as stuff is washing out into the ocean, I got any good ocean pictures there? Probably not. Not today, anyway. We got lots, but. So, rain with 20 million particles. So, that's falling down on the debris in the Pacific Ocean, but that's being picked up from the Pacific Ocean. On top of that, over and over and over, the average person in Seattle was breathing in 10 hot particles a day. And radiation data from Seattle area survey may be withheld by feds for national security purposes. So North America, because 10 hot particles a day, you gotta, don't want that coming out, see? But you paid them to tell you that. You never paid them to hide it, right? And TEVCO ready to release radiation, not information. I just like that headline anyway, but it's true. May the 21st, 2014. 
Look at that building. Look at it. It's all gone, see? This was mixed oxide fuel. It's two million times worse than any reactor on the planet. And I've done two videos last week, one hour on that building, Unit 3. That's Zoe snoring in the background. She's getting old now. She can't run anymore. She's 15. Government may have delayed level 7 to ease people into the harshness. I'll ease you into the harshness one of these days. 40 million beckles of iodine 131. 10 times more 132. This is just a tracer. 30 times more 133. 31 times more iodine 129. And that meant that the other 12 million were there. So 1,500 atoms. Uh, that's the radioactive sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs we were talking about a little earlier. So there's 1,500 per square meter, right? Cubic meter around you. Click something, Dana. So 1,500. When you're walking in the road in California, everything was covered. And imagine 15. A hundred snowflakes per cubic meter sustained for months. Would everything be covered in snow? Well, everything would be covered in radiation, including inside your home. Because when you open your door, you got a cubic meter of air. But this is why we see the extinction event playing out on the extinction on the Pacific coast. Like, we realize the polar bears. Uh, in other countries are starving to death. This polar bear swam for 700 miles. Scientists followed it in a big ship and it starved to death. It starved to death. There was nothing to eat. Uh, this clip coming up, MIT, Jacqueline, I can't even remember her name now, uh, Jacqueline Yates or something, She's talking about all the studies on radiation that they use in when they're talking. She's quite the lying machine, but she does give you this tidbit coming up. I'm not sure what the audio is going to be like, so careful on the audio. Here we go. Possibly on the phone, although I don't see a phone, uh, 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 Jackie Yanch, who's in Spain. Jackie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Until last year, Jack. So this is at MIT. Remember, this was the 15th of March, 2011, four days after. He was a professor uh, in the Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering. She continues to be affiliated with us, and she's a specialist on radiation health effects. I'm here. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get the question. Uh, the question had to do with what are the prospects for long-term contamination in the area around the reactor? I think that was the question. In terms of the amount of release or the consequences of, of a release? I mean, there's been very little that seems to have been uh, released and dispersed uh, beyond the containment. Now, unfortunately, we have very little data, almost no data, about how much radiation we can live with at, at, in terms of elevated background levels. All of our data come about the health effects of radiation come from a situation in which all the doses delivered in uh, less than a minute. So all the doses were delivered in less than a minute that they use is what I'm trying to convey to everybody and how important it is that you can wrap your mind around something like that. Uh, now, the fuel pools are important. This is, I'm not sure what the date was on that one. Will not reach the level of Chernobyl. Uh, and Chernobyl is a lot of radioactivity. Like I said, a hundred times Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. Now. 100 times Hiroshima, Chernobyl, and Nagasaki combined. It was 400 Hiroshima bombs, but he said it wouldn't be a Chernobyl. He's wrong on that one, but anyway. Uh, Three Mile Island. Uh, it, now, I covered him. He's an apologist. But it, that might be more in the realm of where this could go if the safety systems fail. Fail? The, 
Have you seen a picture, Chan? If they lose power to those, uh, the, to that reactor or to any other reactors, uh, past a few hours from now, uh, you might reach a Three Mile Island. Okay, so if you lose power, I meant to play that before, right? So March the 18th, March the 25th, and March the 24th. So the 25th was the last one. I'm sorry, March the 20, 21st, they still hadn't got powers. See? See what I mean by the stuff I tell you? That's how it works anyway. Let's keep going. We're running out of time. Japan's nuclear agency falling amidst fuel had melted in reactor 1, 2, and 3. That was April the 20th. But the apologists and the crazies and the whack jobs out there deny the pictures. Deny that and say, no, 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 it's okay. Roll out set Dorn and then show you the interior and say that that's somehow representation that of what's it actually looking like when it looks like that, right? And then pretend all the reactors survived the tsunami like that building. Ah, oh, it's very tricky how they do it. Very uh, slick, they just keep pumping it out there. I'm going to leave that one there for the backup when I come back. So one, two, and three, uh, you know, midst the fuel and melted. Huge problem, all parts of the fuel rods appear to have melted at all three reactors. I'm looking at three screens at one time, so that's why I stutter the way I do. Rah, rah, rah. May the 17th, 2011. And like I say, once again, you know, I showed you MIT, NRC, MIT, C-SPAN, Stanford, and I don't know why the Harvard one is not here. I'll dig it up and get it in a, next time. That's cool. I got a little tiny bit left to get through, haven't we? Well, hang on. Idea what I got done here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on, that was supposed to be a fireball that time. Hang on, bear with me. Okay, let's bang a couple of four more headlines. Japan government raises and possibility fuel melted June the 7th at all three reactors. All parts of the fuel rods at all three reactors. I screwed up here somewhere. Okay, we got through that. Then, if it's not there, where the hell is it? I'm looking for something that I imported, but I can't find it. And I guess that's just the way it works some days for us. It's kind of like Baghdad Bob. Not near, not near Baghdad. I'm sorry, folks. That's got to be rough on you. It was rough on my eardrums that time. Anyway, that's prop. Not near Baghdad. Don't believe them. They are nowhere. This is silly. My apologies if that was too loud for you. Think about this cesium plume. I'm going to speed this up. This is from Chernobyl. I'm going to go way ahead. To, well, it happened on the 26th, and we're up at the 6th of March. Let's come back a little bit. Look how it circled right around all the continents. But this was one third the size. This was a 30% meltdown. This stopped after 10 days. Now, and then we got, we got, me heading into the Queen Charlotte. Stop. Fuck, that's brutal loud. Sorry, folks. I'm just going to let that play in the background as we come in and say goodbye to everyone for the day. And that. Uh, Move myself over. Hi, Albert. Thank you, everyone for dropping by. Thank you for paying attention. Pay thank you for understanding and thank you
for your patience while I get my act together. It's taken a few months. They destroyed nine computers and a little over a year on us. We done 260 days on the ocean. You can see that below me. I was hidden in the Queen Charlotte city. And that documentation of the coastline is up at uh, up at the nuclear proctologist.org. And I, what you gotta realize is that the four million other species, I'll bring up the other camera here. Four million other species, that one, didn't recede the coastline. Hugs for everybody, white sparrow, sterilite. Need a mic, but no, that's the clip doing that. That wasn't me. I do need one though, I agree. Um, Dalamine, Chris, thank you everybody. Amthurst, thank you everyone. White Sparrow, Albert K, Starlight Amthurst, Albert, anybody I don't get, oomph, Kathy, Kathy, Pam. And don't get discouraged, folks. We're winning in a battle. We are. We're seeing the headlines changing. We're seeing nuclear get smashed everywhere they go. And every time they open their mouth, all we see is a handful of the apologists maintaining. By the way, uh, Tech TV was just saying Forbes uh, advertisement puts malware on your computer and it's despicable. And they're still at it. They've been called out about it before. Forbes, James Conkra who'll tell you like a banana, it's like a potato chip, it's like walking in the sunshine, like getting on an airplane, literally every day. A, just a disgusting PR firm, who actually owns a PR firm and teaches 10 nuclear students how to say banana potato chip for a large amount of cash. Elaine, Jan Brooks, everybody else that we don't see and is out there watching and that is built there doing their own thing, getting busy, uh, able to gleam and understand that you're the power. You're the power. Not me, you. I can provide you with documentation and information and a rallying point. But it's only when everybody, you know, becomes articulate and comes out and challenges the system by holding them accountable. When the media says, it's like a banana, your job for thousands and thousands of people should be to call them up, to email them, to send them written letters, to send them, or to you know, try to contact them, get on their Twitter, get on their Facebook, and call, uh, whoever promoted that, whoever the reporter was, allowed that, and hold them accountable every time. If you're not the checks and balance, then who? It has to be you. You're the power. You just, you have to understand that. You have to take that. So, there you go. Hugs for everybody. We'll catch everybody tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time at livestream.com. Higher quality at Beautiful Girl by Dana later.